Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to look at how to investigate radiance and the inverse square law. So let's get into it. Now one of the learning outcomes from the SQA say that you need to be able to describe an experiment to verify the inverse square law for a point source of light. And that means we're going to look at the steps of a scientific report that you could write if carrying out this experiment in class. So our aim here is to investigate how radiance varies with distance from a point source of light and we're going to try and prove that it's an inverse square law. Looking at the method you'll see the equipment needed so things like a power supply, 12 volt lamp, light meter with detector and a meter stick. And you can set up the equipment as shown in the picture here. So if you set up your lamp at some distance away from the light detector which is connected to your light meter, you can then use your meter stick to move the light detector to different distances. And it says to darken the room and place the light detector a certain distance from the lamp. Measure the distance from the light detector to the lamp using the meter stick, so that's the distance marked here by the arrow, and record the radiance of the light at this distance. Repeat these measurements for different distances between the detector and lamp. So you could either start off with the light detector very close to the lamp and then move it back at regular intervals, regular distances away until you get enough readings that you can then plot a graph from. So something like six readings or more. You could also just start at the other side. So you could start further away and move the light detector even closer and closer to the lamp. What you would then want to do is record your results in a table that looks something like this. So in this example, you've got space for five readings. So you've got distance in meters, distance squared, in meters squared, 1 over distance squared in m to the minus 2, and a radiance in watts per square meter. And it will become clear shortly as to why we need the columns for distance squared and 1 over distance squared. Now you'll see that I've not put any sample results in here, but you should see the pattern that as distance goes up, the radiance goes down. And we can hopefully think about that using common sense, because as you get further away from the light source, the intensity or the radiance of that light is going to decrease. So we should find that as distance increases, the radiance decreases. Once you've got your complete table of results, you can then plot a graph of a radiance against distance. So if we look at our table, that's using the first column and the last column in the table. So if you plot that with a radiance on the y-axis and distance on the x-axis, you should get a graph that looks like this, with an exponentially decaying curve. And this is what we call an inversely proportional relationship. So this tells us that as distance from the point source increases, the radiance decreases. And that's what we just suggested should happen from the results in the table. However, in higher physics, we often like to use straight lines rather than curves. So how could we get a straight line out of the data that we've got from the table? Well, this is where the extra columns come in that we've put in our table. So if you take your distance values and square them to get this column, and then do one divided by those answers to get these values, then you're in a position to be able to plot a radiance against one over the distance squared. And that's what's being done in this graph here. So it says now plot a graph of a radiance on the y-axis versus one over the distance squared on the x-axis as shown below. And by doing this, you should obtain a graph that looks something like this with a straight line through the origin. And remember that means that the two variables here are directly proportional rather than inversely proportional. So we had from the first graph that a radiance is inversely proportional to distance. Or another way of saying that is that a radiance is directly proportional to one over the distance squared. So just remember, a straight line through the origin means directly proportional. So a radiance is directly proportional to 1 over the distance squared. And that tells us that as 1 over the distance squared goes up, the radiance goes up as well. Or as 1 over the distance squared goes down, the radiance goes down as well, because we've got this straight line. Now it's worth pointing out at this stage that if you were carrying out this experiment and then you plotted this graph, and you got some kind of offset from the origin, which shows a systematic uncertainty, then that suggests that you might have some background light in the room, which is interfering feeding with your results. So to minimize errors in your results, you want to make sure you carry out this experiment in a dark room. And you could also use some anti-glare material such as black card and place it over the distance between the light detector and the lamp so that you're not getting any reflections from the worktop surface that you're doing the experiment on as these reflections of light could also interfere with your results. Let's go on now and analyze the results from the experiment. So it says it is clear from the first graph that the relationship between a radiance and distance is not a linear one. So that was this graph here where we had the inversely proportional curve. So we can see we don't have a linear relationship between a radiance and distance, i.e. there's no straight line here. It then says though that plotting a radiance against one over distance also gives a non-linear relationship. And I didn't show you the graph for that, but you can try that out for yourself if you want. 
However, when plotting a radiance against 1 over the distance squared, as we saw in the second graph, we get a straight line through the origin. So remember that was this graph here, where we have the linear relationship between a radiance and 1 over distance squared. So what does this tell us? Well, this means that a radiance is directly proportional to the inverse of the distance squared for a point source of light. This is an inverse square law. So remember, inverse just means 1 over something, and because we've got the 1 over the distance squared, because the distance is squared, it's an inverse square law. So mathematically, we can write this as i for a radiance is directly proportional to 1 over the distance squared, 1 over d squared. And if we want to get this into some kind of equation, then we can get rid of this proportional sign by doing our usual trick to introduce the equal sign. So remember to do that, we can replace the proportional sign with the equal sign as long as we multiply the right hand side term by a constant. So we can say that i is equal to a constant times 1 over d squared, or we can use the symbol k to mean constant here. So if we just put the constant on the numerator, then we have i equals k over d squared. And you get this equation on the relationship sheet in the exam. So what are the symbols and units? Well, we have the i is the irradiance of radiation measured in watts per square meter, k is a constant, which means it has no units, and d is the distance from a point source of light measured in meters. We can then form a second equation from the above though, because it has a constant in it. So it says here, by rearranging the above equation, we can write that i times d squared is equal to the constant k. So that is just taking this equation and multiplying both sides by d squared to get rid of this fraction. So we have that i d squared equals k, or i d squared equals a constant. And then we can do a similar trick to what we did for some equations that you saw at National 5 level. Things like Boyle's Law, Gay-Lussac's Law and Charles's Law, where you had some relationship in terms of a constant, and then you were able to form an equation using the constant. And doing the same here, we can say this can be written in the following way when we measure a radiance at two distances. So we have i1 d1 squared equals i2 d2 squared. And that's because we said that i times d squared is equal to a constant. So technically we could make any i times d squared equal to each other here. So we've used the subscripts 1 here to mean the first distance and first irradiance, and then the subscripts 2 to mean the second distance and second irradiance. But technically this equation could continue it indefinitely, so you could have equals i3 d3 squared equals i4 d4 squared and so on, but you'll never need more than two subscripts here. So again, this equation is on the relationship sheet in the exam, and it says i1 is the irradiance of radiation at the first distance measured in watts per square metre, i2 is the irradiance of radiation at the second distance measured in watts per square metre, d1 is the first distance from a point source of light measured in metres, whereas d2 is the second distance from a point source of light measured in metres. And you'll usually be able to work out from the question what the first distance and first irradiance values are, and then what the second distance and second irradiance values are. And typically they'll give you three of these values and ask you to work out the fourth unknown one. So for example, they might give you a distance and the irradiance at that distance, and then they might say the detector was moved some distance away from the point source, and they want you to calculate the second irradiance at that point and then they would give you the second distance. So that means you would have i1, d1, and d2, and you could then calculate what i2 was. And we'll practice doing that in the worked example video for investigating a radiance and the inverse square law. So just to conclude, we have now verified the inverse square law for a point source of light. It then says to note that you have already come across an example of the inverse square law in relation to gravitational force during the Our Dynamic Universe topic. So remember the equation describing the gravitational force of attraction between two masses, F equals G M1 M2 over R squared, which is also an inverse square law because we can say that the force is directly proportional to 1 over R squared, 1 over the distance squared. And that's similar to what we had in this experiment. We had a ray is directly proportional to 1 over the distance squared. Now I'll just show you a quick simulation which helps support what we've seen. So it says that when a light source radiates energy in all directions, the energy is spread over a greater area as the light moves away from the source. As the distance away from the light source increases, the radiance of the light reaching that position decreases. And on the graph here, we've got a radiance versus distance from the light source. So if we click play here, you'll see we get this decreasing exponential curve. And it says the graph shows how the radiance of light varies with distance from the bulb. So we can see that as distance increases, the radiance decreases. It then says that the relationship is an inverse relationship and plotting a graph of a radiance against the inverse of the distance squared produces a straight line graph which passes through the origin, as shown here. So we've got our radiance against 1 over distance squared this time and the straight line through the origin. We can therefore deduce that the relationship between the radiance i and distance d is given by i is proportional to 1 over d squared, which we've just seen in the notes. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.